Hey guys, so if you follow me on social media, you would know I've been doing quite a bit of reading recently. This isn't even all of it. This is just my favorite. So in today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys what you should be reading this summer or just in 2021 in general or just whenever. These are some of my favorite fiction books that I've read recently. I think that you guys are going to be really into them. Of course, I will say like reading is subjective. So like what I like, you might not necessarily like. I'm still trying to figure out like what genre specifically I like. I have gotten back into reading after honestly, what, four years? Reading for fun, reading fiction books is honestly amazing. Once you get into it, you just have to like read like one or two and then you kind of pick up speed again and kind of get back into the swing of things if you used to be a reader or if you never were in your whole life like just give it a little bit and then you'll get into it and why not start off with one of these that are like great reads they'll kind of like get you into the book right away. Also, if you don't already follow me on Instagram, you definitely should. I give updates on what I'm reading. If you go to my books um, highlight, I always post like mini reviews of when I finish a book and I tell you guys on my stories what I'm currently reading. And of course you could thumbs up this video to let me know that you wanna see more book videos. And subscribe if you guys are new here. My name is Brooke, I'm 24. I live in New York City and I'm a vlogger mostly, but I wanna start kind of dipping my toes into book videos. I show you guys like in my vlogs what books I'm reading, but I thought this would be like a good central video. Just good fiction books that you should add to your summer 2021 reading list. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First up, we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So this is about Hollywood icon Evelyn Hugo. She's finally ready to tell the story of her glamorous and scandalous life. She chooses an unknown magazine reporter, Monique Grant, to write her story. Evelyn made her way to Los Angeles in the 1950s, worked in show business until the 80s. It kind of tells like the story of her life in chapters of her husband's, like yes, there were seven of them. So it breaks it down into sections of her life like as she gets older. But I will say there's kind of a twist in terms of why she chose this specific reporter to kind of tell her life story to. So not only is that an interesting storyline, but also just the story of this woman's life. It takes a lot of twists and turns. I feel like this is one of those that kind of from the beginning you are sort of invested and then when you get to the end, you're like, wow. Damn, if you're into like Hollywood glitz, glamour, like that sort of stuff, this will be for you. Next up we have It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. Sometimes the one who loves you is the one who hurts you the most. I will put a, a trigger warning, I guess, for this when I recommend it to people. I usually say a trigger warning for this one with um, domestic abuse themes. Lily hasn't always had it easy, but that's never stopped her from working hard for the life she wants. She's come a long way from her small town in Maine. She graduated college, moved to Boston, started her own business. When she feels a spark with gorgeous neurosurgeon named Ryle, everything in Lily's life suddenly seems maybe too good to be true. Love story, but um, let me tell you, this one made me cry a lot. You just feel so connected, I think, to the main character, the way that it's written. She goes back and reads like old journal entries. So it's told like in present tense, but she does a lot of reflection back to like her high school self and when she was growing up. Definitely a good one. I think I, I want to say I read this one really quick, maybe like one or two sittings. And I will say Colleen Hoover is one of my favorite um, authors currently I'm reading another one of her books. I also read Verity by her. That's an honorable mention on this list, but this one, oof, it got me. Next up, we have a bit of a thriller. I kind of veer between two genres. I would say like the more like romancy reads and then thrillers, which I'm not a person. I don't listen to scary podcasts really, or what do we want to call them? Like murder podcasts. I don't like scary movies. I don't like pop outs. I get kind of scared, but for some reason in book form, it doesn't bother me as much. Maybe it's because I can disconnect it. This one's like a psychological thriller. So the book is told by a psychotherapist who is very captivated by this woman, Alicia's story. So Alicia was a painter. She was married to a fashion photographer. She lived like this, like supposedly from the outside looking in like really glamorous life, just like a very happy life. One evening, her husband returned from work. She shot him five times and then she never spoke another word. So for years, like the police were trying to do reports and figure out, you know, what exactly happened. And she just didn't talk. This psychotherapist who, like I said, like he kind of tells the story, his determination to get her to talk and unravel the mystery of why she shot her husband takes him down a path more unexpected, more terrifying than ever imagined, a search for the truth that threatens to consume him. Shocking, thought-provoking, and deeply twisted, The Silent Patient is a spellbinding psychological thriller about violence, obsession, and the dark side of passion. The twist in this one, insane. Like, I was reading the whole thing and I really enjoyed the book, but you will, like, my mouth, like, dropped to the floor when I was on, like, the last few chapters. I kind of like books like that, that in the end, it all co comes full circle. You know, sometimes you can see it coming, like this one, 
no. The cover of this definitely like turned me off. I was like, I'm not really into like scary, whatever. I personally didn't see this book as like too gory or too scary. It's more the psychotherapist, um, psychological analyzation of everything. Another romance read, this one is called The X Talk. It's told by this woman, Shay. She's in her late 20s. She works at this Seattle public radio station and she's worked there for a while. She's super successful. And then um, there is a new employee, newer, I guess I should say, Dominic. And basically the station is struggling. They're doing a lot of layoffs. The boss basically says, you're either fired or you guys have to co-host this show. They are enemies and it takes a turn. So then they start this podcast together, which I do like the fact that it kind of intertwines like modern references of course podcasting if you don't know i have a podcast so i thought it was interesting their audience gets invested fast and it's not long before the x talk becomes a must listen in seattle and climbs the podcast charts as the show gets bigger so does their deception especially when shay and dominic start to fall for each other in an industry that values truth getting caught can mean the end of more than just their careers there were some steamy scenes in this one i read this really quickly too i want to say in like one or two sittings i tend to like sit down and read them in like four hour chunks. If you're looking for just like, you know, an enemies turned lovers sort of story, it's not even giving it away. I mean, like it's on the back of the book, but it's good. This is like a lighter one. It's not gonna like make you cry. I didn't cry at least. <laughs> Next up we have The Last Mrs. Parrish. This I genuinely read in one night. Like I start to finish and I stayed up until like 1 a.m. because it was that good. And that is way past my bedtime these days. Amber Patterson is fed up. She's tired of being a nobody, a plain invisible woman. She deserves more life of money and power like the one that blonde haired, blue eyed goddess Daphne Parrish takes for granted. To everyone in this exclusive town, Daphne looks like a socialite. Her real estate mogul husband, Jackson, they're like sh truly a couple straight out of a fairy tale and Amber's envy could eat her alive. But Amber like comes into the town basically. She comes into it targeted like with a plan. Amber uses Daphne's compassion to insinuate herself into the family's life. Before long, Amber is Daphne's closest confidant, traveling with them, growing closer to Jackson. This one took so many twists that I wasn't expecting. We got the one layer of this woman trying to like infiltrate herself into this family. We've got the other layer of like how everything might not be as glamorous as it appears on the surface. We've got a lot of like manipulation going on. I'm not gonna spoil it, but this was another one that like when you hit the twist, you're like, what? I just wasn't expecting it to take that sort of a turn. This is another one. I would say like romance thriller with this one because I guess it like does have a little bit of both but mostly thriller. Stay tuned for the twist. Lastly, I have a series, I guess, that I want to recommend to you guys. This is a young adult book, actually. I read this in the fall, I think, and I really, really enjoyed them. They were just like a nice, easy read, but I did still really enjoy the characters. What if America had a royal family? The Washingtons, that's right, descendants of George, have been on the American throne for two and a half centuries. They're the most famous family in the world, but behind the glittering ballrooms and perfect public personas, are romance and scandalous secrets that could cost them the throne. And it's about this family. We have like the oldest sibling, Beatrice, and then her sister, Samantha, and um, there's a twin. And then they have their friend, who's just like a regular person, Nina. Then there's this girl, Daphne, who she's more of like a finesser, like she's trying to like get her way in. But it's love, it's drama, it's family stuff. I also then read the sequel. I read it on my iPad actually, but it's called Majesty. I loved this book so much that I immediately had to download the sequel because I wanted to see where it went. I do think the first one is better than the second. I feel like this is just a lighter read. Like sometimes you need to break it up from the more heavy, aggressive ones, but this was a good one to like kind of break me back into reading um, without being too, too intense. Deliciously romantic, that's one of the quotes. And I kind of agree. I remember this one, I was like, damn, the main guy sounds like phenomenal. That's it. This is gonna be my first of probably many book videos. I actually really like reading fiction in the summer, especially like a nice, I don't really love the beach, but a nice poolside read or a nice beach read when you're sitting outside, maybe you have a little more downtime if you're planning to do some travel this summer. I always love to, when I'm like on the go, have um, some sort of novel with me. I find that it breaks up like free time nicely if you're just like, oh, I have my book, like I'll go sit and read. So definitely add these to your list. Let me know what other type of book rec videos you guys would wanna see. I could definitely do ones on nonfiction or I'd be happy to share like what I'm reading coming up. Maybe I could do one of those, like do like a big book haul and show you guys like what I'm planning to read. Support your local bookstores if you can. Love you guys so much and I will talk to you all next time. Bye guys.